You've turned on Sexy Marriage Radio, where the best sex happens in the marriage bed. Here's your host, Dr. Corey Allen. Welcome to another episode of Sexy Marriage Radio, where we are having uh, all kinds of straightforward conversations trying to speak straight into what are the issues that you face in your marriage, what are the struggles, what are the pitfalls, the problems, and then the other side of the spectrum fits too. What are the celebrating se- the, the successes and the great victories and the moments that we just remember and long for more and more? That's what we try to cover uh, with each episode of Sexy Marriage Radio. And what helps frame our conversation largely is you, our audience, the Sexy Marriage Nation, where we want to hear from you. Uh, We want to know what questions you've got, what topics you've got, uh, even successes you've had. You can do two things to get it. Let us know. You can give us a call. 214-702-9565 is our voicemail line. Or you can send us an email at feedback at sexymarriageradio.com. We also have to offer up that uh, with Sexy Marriage Radio 3.0 that's going on, you don't just have to listen anymore. You can watch us too if you'd like on YouTube. You can see every episode. And if you like it, share it. And the same thing we ask on iTunes. If you like it, please rate and review. That just helps more people find us. So this is continuation of a show we've already done on a topic that uh, has been brought up in the past that we've not done fully. So I've, Dr. Carroll, uh, Tanksley is joining me on the episode today and we were talking right before we hit record about how we're going to solve this issue in the next 30 minutes. <laughs> we are miracle workers, didn't but, you know that? Yes, so you have come to the right place if you're just now finding Sexy Marriage Radio. No, this is one of those times where I want to have a wealth of voices that help uh, frame conversations because Sexy Marriage Radio has existed to try to help uh, move the ball down the field a little bit with, with the problems that, that couples face because some of them can't be solved, but we can live through them better and we can experience things better. And so Dr. Carroll is going to be joining me in this conversation about menopause and then we might even spin into just some of the later life issues that come along with that uh, because it's worth discussing. And so Dr. Carroll, welcome to the show and I'm going to ask if you would if people don't know who you are, kind of just give a brief, this is me. This is me. I'm an OBGYN physician for over 25 years. I also have a doctor in ministry. I think that gives me kind of a unique perspective. I have been treating women with menopause for over 25 years. <laughs> so I've seen a lot of those challenges. Yep. And I am a member of the Over 50 Club now myself. So I can consider myself one of these uh, people that we're talking to today. Okay. <laughs> You can listen to this right after it airs and think, hey, that's good. That's good information. That's useful. Exactly. <laughs> and I get some of these questions myself as, as a woman and mm-hmm. in, from the, the medicine and ministry perspective. So I really feel honored, Dr. Corey, that uh, we can have this conversation together. Uh, me too. I got to say thank you for joining me. You were on an episode many, many months ago, uh, way back in the archives, and, and you, I remembered I made a note, Dr. Carroll, ask her again. So it's, it's been too long. So I'm glad, I'm glad to see you back on here with us again. And so let's just kind of go into uh, just the description of menopause, I guess, from a medical viewpoint, uh, because it, it's, a, it's a range, right? It's, sure. not, it's, it's, it's not one day. Right. And I, it, it, <laughs> right. That, that is a misnomer or misunderstanding that I think both men and women sometimes think, well, I'm either before this day or I'm after this day, but it's a okay. transition. And okay. I think that in itself can help us understand some of, the, uh, some of the issues, some of the processes, some of the changes in a woman's experience and physiology through that period of time. What menopause means, the word itself means the last menstrual period. Okay. But I think a, a better term perhaps is the climacteric. Now that's a medical word. Okay. That, that the process can start several years prior to the last period and last up until at least two to five years after the last period. Okay. The changes that a woman goes through during that transition process, some of them are permanent. In other words, 
some of the ways a woman's body functioned prior to menopause will never come quite back to there. And frankly, I'm glad I don't have to worry about pregnancy and periods anymore. There are some <laughs> good things to this transition. Sure, I, I'm glad I don't have to worry about pregnancy <laughs> and periods anymore too. Oh, wait, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> different concept. Um, but I, what are some of the markers that this stage is uh, approaching or early on or a, as it goes? What are some of the things that kind of help uh, give some signals or clues? The most common one is a change in a woman's menstrual cycle. They may become closer together. They may become farther apart. They may become lighter or heavier. One way that I describe it to my patients is that the highs are higher and the lows are lower when it comes to hormones. And that can change all kinds of things. That can mean that a woman's premenstrual syndrome, if she's struggled with PMS in the past, her PMS may temporarily be more problematic. It may mean that the character of her periods is much less predictable, and she may start to have some symptoms that are normally associated with those hormone changes. The most common one would be night sweats or hot flashes. There are others, um, but those would be some of the most common symptoms that signal, yes, this process is starting. Okay, and is there um, a target age as far as what research in biology has found? Average age is 51. Okay. Some women will start this process at 40 or in their early 40s. There are some women who may still be having periods at 54, 55, although that's unlikely. The late 40s or early 50s would be most common. We say statistically the average is 51. Okay, and that's good to know because that helps at least let people know that are heading towards that. It's fast approaching that, all right, hey, these are some of the things to maybe be more aware of or... It maybe you look back and go, I remember that. I remember exactly. that. I, that makes sense now. Now, okay, now it all kind of, you know, it's, it's like post, postscript stuff. We can remember, it, it makes sense a lot of times, but not right. necessarily during. So I guess, because I, I want to keep this in the context that this is not just, if it, since this show is about uh, married sex, this is an issue that women face that's not just a woman's issue. It's a relationship issue It's because it, is it changes the dynamic. Yes, it does. And so what are some of the things that you've seen from the two different hats or lenses you've got of, of medical and ministry that um, are the best ways to go about this, I guess? And then some of the, no, that's probably, let's chalk that up for not to do. I can tell you I've received countless emails or other messages from very frustrated husbands saying, what did you do with my wife and how can I get her back? <laughs> right. Um, the, the interest that a woman displays in sex it statistically can change at that time. Now, that's not always necessarily in a negative direction. Okay. Uh, a woman's libido actually peaks Uh, statistically in a woman's 40s so it doesn't have to go from bad to worse it can actually get better okay but just talking about the the husband side uh, for a minute a husband will often notice that his wife doesn't respond the way that she did in the past okay women are as as a woman I think we're a little more uh, aware of change and anticipating change the husband says, hey, I had a good thing. Uh, why can't we get back to that? Right. So just right. being aware that, that seasons of life are, are coming can help. Yeah, I, husband- I used to say, I'm going to interrupt you just real quick because it's interesting to me. I use the same kind of thought process with this, with parenting, that just when you get your kids figured out, the stage changes. It does. Right? It's like they, you got the, I, I, I understand toddlerhood now. Now all of a sudden they're in school and now I understand elementary. Now they're in middle school. And then that whole thing just keeps going. And I think marriages can fit that same kind of scope. It does. Marriage does go through seasons. Uh, b- before we talk about a few of the specifics, I, I want to say that good science shows that married, happily married couples can still have and often are having satisfying, enjoyable sex into their 70s, 80s, and beyond. Yep. So I just want to start with that as a framework. In fact, one of the recent studies that I saw just in the last couple of weeks said seniors are having sex, they just don't talk about it. Well, we're here to talk about it. Yep. We actually did a show on that topic. 
Exactly. It, it was based on that, that very article because it is one of those things that, hey, there's not enough conversations going on, hence this one <laughs> that, exactly. we're, that we're having. And, and thank you for bringing this up. Back to the idea of some of the changes that this menopause transition can bring in relationships. Uh, that's one from the husband side. Some changes in the wife's side, a common one that she will notice is that her lubrication decreases. It's okay. not as quick or easy to get lubricated. Mm -hmm. And it may take her much longer to get aroused. One of the things that I tell uh, seniors, women over menopause is enjoy the time. This is a time where quickies might not be quite as easy, but the longer satisfying connections with your spouse mm -hmm. can, be, can, can increase. So if you will give yourself some extra time, your body can still respond. And this is something both husbands and wives can benefit by knowing. Right. Um, build up to it. Right. Something that I think you have talked about on the show that I think um, I, I may have, uh, we may have spoken a little bit about before, sex really begins in the mind. Yep. And this is never more true than as women get a little bit older, consciously choosing to point your mind toward this kind of connection with your husband can improve a woman's ability to respond. I, I completely agree because it is that whole idea of the mind is the largest sex organ we've it is. got. It is. Um, so how do we, and I love Esther Perel's statement of foreplay begins after orgasm. I like that. I say it begins in the one. morning in the, in the kitchen. Well, no, that works not. too. That works too. But I love the idea of, okay, we just finished. Now it's time to start setting up the next one, whenever that is. And that right. could be days, weeks, whatever, depending on circumstances. But I love the concept of keeping this in the, in the framework of, hey, this is still a priority. This is something I want to focus on. And so I need to devote some of my mental energy towards it. And I would... I'm going to circle back just real quick to the concept of the husband's path in this, because speaking for my kind, we are um, creatures of habit, creatures of routine. Yes. You know, we fall victim to the do what works last time mentality a lot. And so when these kinds of changes happen because of seasons and situations and stages of life, it can be like, that's not even fair. I just had that one working out pretty well. And now, you know, so we can get, we can become little pouty little boys. I'll, I'll admit that. But the goal would be, as far as I see it, how do we as husbands then recognize, I need to not take this personally and be an ally in this journey with her because it impacts both of us. It's not just her changing the rules by her choice. It's, That's correct. It's, what's hap it's, it's, it's designed to happen this way. You guys like adventure. Look at this as an adventure. Stay there you go. There you go. It may feel like she's a, a nut you can never crack, but she wants you to keep searching her out. Yep. She wants you to keep finding the key to her heart. And that doesn't have to be difficult or magical. It doesn't have to take, you know, a lot of money and, and you, you don't have to be, you know, Romeo, but be creative. Yep. Keep, keep finding her heart. Keep seeking her heart. It can perhaps feel a little old after, God willing, 20, 30, 40 years, but it can be, it can be the adventure. Look yes. at it as that. Yes, and, that's, and I love that framework because that's, that's a whole different connotation of this is a new adventure that we can take together because I would also add one little condition of she's not the point of the adventure. Oh, it's yes. The adventure you go on together. Yes. <laughs> you draw her into something bigger, not just, okay, I've rescued her. Now I'm, my work is done. You know? It's not done. Be <laughs> her hero. Continue to be her hero. Right. right. Uh, so, a couple, a couple things, um, and forgive me if I interrupted you. No, go ahead. You're great. There, there's two things that I think both wives and husbands can also understand during this season of life that may help. Because of the hormone changes, sometimes a woman can very much benefit from talking with a gynecologist about whether hormone uh, treatment may be advisable. It's okay. not an option for every woman. Right. And it doesn't solve every problem. 
But I can tell you that there are so many women, especially after menopause, who have really been struggling. They want to connect with their husband, but there's physical discomfort and they're struggling to respond because of that physical discomfort and treatment can turn things around. Okay. So I, I do want to want to put that in there. We're not here to, to treat or diagnose, but no. husbands yeah. help your wife get that kind of care and wives, you owe it to your husband that if there, if this is a way you can improve, do that. At least have the conversation with your doctor about whether hormones can improve your ability to respond. It's perhaps especially for women, when something is uncomfortable, your brain gets turned off. If sex starts to become physically painful and uncomfortable, a wife is not going to be nearly as responsive. Right. She's not going to be as interested she's going to close down emotionally right because she's not wanting to hurt physically so sometimes medical treatment can take care of that physical part which really can spur the emotional part of the connection as well okay so i i, I want to see if we can help frame that dynamic because what comes to my mind dr carol is you get this idea of you're recognizing there's a shift going on in your relationship and i'm going to come at it from the husband's point of view and he's seeing something's changing. She's not as responsive. She's not as engaged. Um, it, there, she's even showing that maybe this is a little more discomfort at times. You know, there's, there's markers that are going on. Yes. But she's not acknowledging that because this is a, one of those things that when, you know, there's an issue that happens in a marriage and I want to bring it up, but it's kind of like my wife's issue, but it's impacting me. It's really delicate in how I can approach that subject. And so are there some things or ways that that can be approached that are better and greater likelihood of success and less likelihood of World War III? I can tell you what not to do is <laughs> okay. you better get to the doctor because I'm coming after you tonight. That's not going to work. <laughs> that's not good foreplay. No, that's, no, that's, that's, not, no, good that, that's not good. But, but let me, let me give guys that may be in this kind of situation kind of a, a, a way to uh, find that key to your wife's heart. Something like, honey, I can't believe how blessed we are that God gave us each other. We've had these years together and you are the most valuable thing in the world to me. I want, and I believe God wants, the next 10, 15, 20 years of our life to be the best yet. Okay. Let's work together to make this aspect of our relationship as, as good as it can be. I want you to know that I want to listen. I want to hear what may be making that difficult for you. I want to help us get past those hurdles Okay. so that we can enjoy an even stronger relationship in the years to come. That's good. I like that because it's not attacking. It's, it's kind of framing it and drawing something larger and forward Yes. as, as we progress. Because I, I also like the idea of just acknowledging what you're experiencing, not necessarily calling out, you're not into this anymore. Because then that's a kind of a, that's, that invokes a defensive reaction just naturally. As, right. As but if I bring it up with a little more curiosity or just a, 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 an observing kind of a stance of, you know what, I'm noticing some things that are different. Are you as well? And maybe that draws out some conversations that then lead to, okay, what are our options? What, what do we need to do? What, what's my role? What's your role? And, and then we can maybe chart a course together that yes. does find solutions. Cause that's the big thing. You know, we fought, we, we've always tried to be at Sexy Marriage Radio advocates for good uh, information, for good resources, for having somebody to walk alongside the difficult stages. And this is where people like yourself, um, other sex therapists or, you know, just hormone specialists, you know, just right. people that are trained, because that's not me. I'm not a hormone specialist and I'm not an OBGYN. I did not go to medical school, as my daughter would say, when I pull it out that I'm a doctor. She's like, yeah, but you're not a doctor that can really do anything, dad. And I'm like, ouch. Okay. But it's just <laughs> seeing it as, okay, find, find the good resources that are available because in this world we've got, we're in, we, they're at our fingertips. Exactly. And let me just turn this around. I also hear from women whose husbands have started to develop ED. And okay. when a guy's performance goes down, 
you guys don't like to continue to pursue something if you're not going to be successful at it. That is true. It, it, it's, you know, it's an affront to your manhood and, and this goes both directions. So whether yep. it's the husband or the wife, let me encourage you to look at the problem from the same side. You're yes. not fighting your spouse. You're fighting the problem together. Yes, and like you were point. saying, Corey, you can then work toward a solution together that right. will benefit the relationship. Right. Because I think the whole goal is that what you do with your ministry and your show and the work that you do is, is really trying to draw people into this teamwork mindset, yes. this idea of it's not me against you, that it's, it's us. Absolutely. It's, it's Absolutely. us figuring this out together. It's like you just framed earlier of it's an adventure. It's we're on this journey and path together. And so I like the concept of we can either be allies or combatants in this thing. And there you go. a lot of times an ally is going to get a whole lot more done and get a whole lot more out of this than being a combatant. And how do I muster up the courage to recognize this is my path. This is what's going on. This is where we need to head and et cetera, because I think that just frames everything in new possibilities. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's another dynamic at this stage in life that I think can be helpful to understand. Go. And this can, probably impact a woman's sexual connection even more than a guy's. There are lots of other things in life that can be weighing, that can uh, be adding to a woman's stress at this point. Okay. Her children may be uh, getting a little older and maybe their struggles with teenagers or the empty nest syndrome. She may be taking on the emotional uh, weight of caring for aging parents. She may right. be looking at her own um, her career has less yet to come than she's already been. Uh, right. She can start feeling old herself. Right. right. And those other dynamics uh, can really play into how a woman wants to bring herself to her husband sexually. And so I think on both for the husband and the wife, it can become extra important to realize how much the spaghetti in a woman's brain, everything's connected with everything else. Right. So part of their joint uh, journey together on this adventure can be looking not only at the sex itself, but on how all these other factors at this stage in life are playing into their connection physically as well as otherwise. Right, right. And I love, I don't know, if you watched, this was years ago, the movie The Guardian came out, Kevin Costner, and he was a, a, a rescue swimmer with the Coast Guard. And later in the movie, there was a great scene where he's talking with um, an old friend of her of his that's a woman that's a singer in a bar, and she owns the bar, and, and they've had this long-standing friendship. And he's talking to her about, man, how did we ever get this old? You know, well, how did, and he's, he's just kind of reminiscing about right. life, life. I'm just breaking down. I can't do what I used to do. And I love her response because she just basically said, getting old is earned. I love and that. I do too. I'm like, that is brilliant advice because this is about living a lot of life and I've earned getting old. I've earned what's going on with me. And, and I think that just shifts the entire paradigm. It does. It does. Life has brought us to this point. And it's for older women, especially, um, you've made it. You yep. know, I, I, I think both men and women struggle with being old, but you know, women may take their, their physical appearance especially hard you yeah you've made it this far like you right. did, you, you've earned it there's right. things you have learned that you your 20 year old self didn't know would you really want to go back there <laughs> look at the benefits that you do have right. rather, than, rather than what you don't and right. remember even though the sexual connection between husband and wife may take a little extra intentionality these can be the best years of your life you don't right. have to and worry I, about PMS. You don't have to worry about, you know, birth control. You don't have to worry about the kids walking in on you. That's Enjoy kind of what I was thinking. It. Yep. Enjoy it. You've got a chance to have empty nest and uh, usually a little more uh, freedom and flexibility possibly. That's right. Of what you've earned and worked towards and launched and, and how you've kind of succeeded with things that this is, this is a chance you can truly enjoy what you've earned. And yes. 
and celebrate it with the person you love. I mean, that's, that's a great picture. So are there any other, from, from what you've come across that um, we need to just make sure we hone in before we wrap this whole thing up? I would just remind both husbands and wives that it's a mindset. Okay. It doesn't have to be because I'm not 20, therefore I can't enjoy sex anymore. It's a choice. It's right. a mindset that other couples have continued to in, enjoy that physical intimacy for decades. You can too mm -hmm. join together. And, and this is part of the mindset. See your spouse as your ally and you'll get a whole lot farther, whether you're the husband or the wife. I Focus agree. on the mindset. Yep. I agree because I think it's, it really comes down to just recognizing, okay, this is just an inevitability of life. This is an inevitability of the stages of a relationship that, that there will be things that happen. I mean, that research continues to show that marital satisfaction increases the longer you're together. Absolutely. I see that regularly too, that that's an ongoing truth that research is continuing to demonstrate. Right. Which I think that that means because it exists. I mean, research is just pointing out what exists. Right. So I like that fact that it's like, okay, this is something that, you know, Pam and I just celebrating 25 years this year. Congratulations. Thank you. But it's one of those like, wow, I was typing it out the other day and I was like 25. I play basketball with, that's how dude, some of the, that's how old some of the dudes I play basketball with are. And, and like, wow. Okay. That's all right though. I'm, that's a cool thing because we've got a lot of knowledge just because of living. That's right. This, this, this path together. And I think if we can see this as, okay, it's an inevitability. We're going to have some issues. We're going to have some things that are going to come up. I mean, you and I both work in professions that we know problems exist. That's right. We know there's struggles and there's pain. So how do I keep that mindset of, okay, if it happens, I'll, I'll seek out what's necessary. I'll ask the right questions. I'll find the right resources. Because to me, that changes the whole game to where we realize we're not alone in this. Not at I got, all. I got people that can help me, let alone the person I'm here in this with. Exactly. Exactly. And to keep focused on the relationship beyond your own personal symptoms. The relationship that you've invested however many years in, right. uh, that is worth investing in. It's worth investing in intimacy in all its dimensions. Don't Absolutely. let that go what you've already built. Absolutely, because intimacy just gets even better yes, it does. when you've got more of you to share in the sense that, because that's the way I think of the correlation of a lot of sexual and marital satisfaction, the correlation is longevity relates to a higher percentage of satisfaction. And I think of it as because we just become more comfortable in our own skin. That I kind of recognize, you know what? This is me. And I like me. Even with all that gravity and wrinkles and age and too many Twinkies have done, I, I like me. I'm okay with that. And it... it you know, God has invested in you. You've invested in your marriage. Enjoy it. This is exactly. a time to celebrate. Exactly. Well, I hope that um, you've enjoyed this. So tell people how they can find you uh, and, and the work that you do. Thanks so much for giving me that opportunity. DrCarolMinistries.com. That's D-R-C-A-R-O-L Ministries.com. Uh, we've got uh, a few books there, including a book on women's health. We've got um, articles and resources on marriage, on health, on spiritual transformation. Love to have you come join us. Perfect. Well, Dr. Carol, I have to say thank you, thank you, thank you for taking some time with me. And then I have to say thank you, thank you, thank you to the Sexy Marriage Nation for taking time out of their day to spend it with us. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, um, recognize changes are going to come, but you don't have to go through them alone. So if we left something undone or you want a little bit more, feedback at sexymarriageradio.com or give us a call, 214-702-9565. We'll see you next time.